Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be a ranking of all of the eyeshadow palettes I tried in 2022. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. If you're into eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of your makeup the way I am, then definitely stay tuned because this video is going to be right up your street because I have tried quite a few eyeshadow palettes in, in the past year, and that's what I'm gonna chat to you about today. I have ranked these from my least favorite to my favorites, and of course, I already did a bit of a favorites video with my like top 10 palettes of the year, so the top 10 should no longer be a surprise to you. And I did, I do have to say a little bit in advance that I have tried more palettes than what I'm showing you today in the ranking, but some palettes I already knew straight away I wanted to declutter, so some of those are already gone, I no longer have them, or they are things that I have put away in a to declutter box, so they're not part of my active makeup collection, and I just figured if I didn't find it right off the bat worth enough to keep it around in my makeup collection, it doesn't even warrant ranking, so that's why those things are going to be excluded here, but I still have around 80 palettes to chat to you about, so let me just get to it because this is going to be a long one. But before we get to the video, I would like to say to everybody who's new here and has never watched one of my videos that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and it greatly skews my makeup preferences. And because I've been doing this for a very long time, I've been reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I have some strong favorites as well, so if you'd like to join the Snow Angel Club, then definitely just click subscribe down below. So let me get to the ranking. We're gonna start from like 80-ish. I did a count when I took them upstairs, it was 79, and now I've put them all into piles and it seems to be 80. So I don't know exactly where we're gonna start even. Apparently I can no longer count in 2023. So at the bottom of this ranking, spots 80 and 79, you could say, I'm going to put these. These were not bad. Like if I show you things at the bottom of this ranking that you absolutely love and adore, I do apologize, but they just didn't work for me quite the same it did for you. Um, I tried these Douglas palettes. These were a gift and I just wanted to try these. I had never tried the Douglas formula. And this is just very basic eyeshadow. And I feel that for what I see this brand go for, it's a little too steep. Like this is S's and Catrice quality, like when they're not trying very hard, but this is like at least twice, if not three times more expensive. Granted, this store does do like 25% off deals quite often, so you can definitely get it for cheaper. In case you don't know, Douglas is a German chain store of like beauty stores, similar to a Sephora, but that's the one that we have over here. We don't have Sephora, we have Douglas and Easy Buggy, uh, which is actually Dutch. Um, so here we have Eyes Full of Stars, which looks a lot more neutral and cool tone because of the blue background, and it actually did. Um, very weak shimmer formula in here, didn't love it. Similarly here, but I like the uh, Sunset Girl just a little bit better. Um, this had some more interesting shade. We had a little bit more depth, and um, it had a, look, a couple of shades like this peachy shade that looked a little bit more like a duochrome, so it had a bit more interest, but I didn't love the color story. It was far too warm for my liking. And like I mentioned, the quality for the price point, I felt disappointing. Then next in this bottom part of the ranking is ColourPop. Um, these two larger nine pants I finally tried this year, and I'll just show you. Um, this is no longer ColourPop shadows. Oh, my, my mat has now completely exploded. I definitely need to start like repressing that ASAP, but these are all Juvia's Place uh, shadows that I've repressed. So this isn't even ColourPop anymore. And then the shades from the Off Quartz and a sprinkle of little magic that I did like, I popped in here and I rearranged the color story to make it more up my alley. But now that ColourPop does these larger pans, I feel they're far more harder pressed than they used to be in the past. Um, I haven't tried a lot of it, but if this is what ColourPop quality is like now, I just think I will have to stop buying from them because this, I just didn't like. It was far too like tough to pick up with a brush. I didn't love it for that. And then the next two spots are going to be the two uh, Essence palettes from the Disney Classics collab that they did in the springtime. Don't get me wrong, these are good palettes. They, they were nice, but I know that Essence can do better eyeshadow quality than this. Um, so the Bambi is perhaps the more like universally appealing color story here. 
Um, it's got some greens and it got a lot of neutral tone browns. It was nice. It was okay. It, it's not terrible makeup for sure, but I feel that within these limited edition collections, Essence and Catrice just don't tend to do the best things they've ever done. So that's why I did want to show these here. And then the Dumbo is really pretty. It's a very unique color story with a lot of blues and grays and this really pretty pastel yellow that actually did show up on me without having to use a white base. So I was pretty surprised with that. But this is just not something I see myself reaching for a whole lot, as unique as it is. So this is definitely, I think, going to go into a makeup memories box as like one of the essence palettes that I like to keep around from this collection for sure. I try these things out. Um, because they make for good content, but most of the time these limited edition collections that Essence and Catrice do, I don't tend to keep around all of their stuff at all times, for sure. This would be pay spot number 74, and this is the Beauty Bay Age of Opulence. I also used to own the Wilderness, and I reviewed those at the same time, but I took the shades from the Wilderness that I liked, repress them and put them into a different palette, so I no longer have the physical palette of the Wilderness. I didn't like these in terms of formula, so I know that I won't have to try any Beauty Bay palettes anytime soon. The only reason why I decided to keep around the Age of Opulence for now is because this has the blues, the greens, and the purples that I tend to like, but I could do without all, the, all of the neutrals in here, and especially their like shimmer formula is that very creamy texture, which I don't always love. Um, and the mattes in here are just a little overly pigmented and they're not very blendable because of it, I feel. Um, I prefer more blendable shadows, so that's why this has to go into the bottom part of the ranking, and it's the reason why I pulled apart the uh, Wilderness palette, and with this, I think that next round, I'm just going to declutter it because I'm not even thinking, I like, I'm not thinking about this palette, I don't need to keep this around. And then two palettes that I've already put in my worst of a video of 2022, I was not very, very taken with the Glaminatrix Nearly Natural palette. This is pretty. It's a really pretty. And if you love this formula, I think you're going to love the palette. But I didn't like the shimmer formula in here. I felt it was very flaky, a little bit dry. I needed layering in order to get it to look very intense. It was very difficult to pick up with a brush, which is why I didn't love it. And another reason why I didn't love this palette as much as I was expecting it to, which is where most of the disappointed appointment actually comes from, is because it is far more warm toned than what it looked like in a lot of the pictures online. It looked far more neutral, far more cool, cool toned. But in the end, what I got was a warm rosy tone palette. And I already have a couple of those that I love. So I didn't really need it and if I had known that in advance, I might have actually skipped this um, In the end this and this those are the only cool tones we get These two greeny shades that a lot of people are very excited for looked very weird on my skin tone personally I found um, and just not that unique and distinct as I had expected so that's why the Glaminatrix nearly natural has to go into the bottom part of the ranking. I feel similarly about my Patrick Ta Major Dimension. I already told you everything about this palette that I wanted to say. I mean, it's got creams, which didn't work for me. The shimmer formula is really, really difficult with, to pick up with a brush. I can only pick this up with a finger, and I don't mind using my fingers with shimmers, don't get me wrong, but if I can't pick them up with a brush, I can't use them as inner corner highlights, I can't do halo eyes, I can't put them onto a lower lash line, which is where I typically use my shimmers, usually. So this, I just didn't love. The mattes in here are stunning. Best mattes on the planet, for sure. Um, but the shimmer formula is just the really re is the reason for me to not love this as much as, as I was hoping it. And finally, in this part of the ranking, so this would be number 71, is the Zishi Palace Identity Palette. Now, this is, I got this in PR, so this was not something I bought myself, but the box opens like this. And then inside it, we get quite possibly some of the most stunning packaging that has happened in the realm of makeup in a while. So it's this op opulescent, like very iridescent sort of top with these two dragons on there. We get some stunning em embossing inside it. It was really pretty. These were some really pretty looks, but it's a little bit warm toned for my liking, which is why it goes in here. And I think that with Zishi, you need to realize that part of what you pay for is the packaging. And I feel that quality-wise, this is like good drugstore. 
but is it then worth the price point that these things go for? That's sort of like the question I still have for myself. I don't think if I had bought this with my own money, I don't think I would have liked it as much uh, as I do now because I, of course, was sent it for free and to talk about it in a video. And I like the video, like I like the looks that came out of it. It was okay, but the packaging is just really what makes this palette. And I, I'm, I'm sort of like also over that a little bit, but yeah, this is gonna st go into a makeup memories box for sure, because it's just too stunning. And yes, I've kept the outer box because that's stunning too. <sighs> I'm a bit of a magpie at, at the end of the day, but that's not what should make, like skew my makeup. Like my, my opinion I feel when it comes to, is this good makeup or not? So that's why this does go into the bottom of the ranking. So we're getting down from 70 to 60. So this is number 70. This is the Kiko Precious Rituals limited edition. And I have put this in a video where I did a full face of this limited edition collection at the end of 2021, but I hadn't gone back to it and like put it in a proper review. So I did review this for you in the end. And this was nice, but like with the Zishi palette, it's just a little bit warm tone for my liking. And I think the one that I got from this year's Christmas collection was much better for what I liked. Um, so Kiko is one of those brands that a lot of people request I try their eyeshadow palettes because people want to know what the quality is like. But with Kiko, I've said this so many times, if you want to try Kiko eyeshadow, try their singles, their eyeshadow sticks, their water shadows, their glitter shower shadows. Those are all amazing, but they're not really good at putting together interesting color stories that make you go like, oh, I want to try that palette. Plus they redo a lot of their color stories from limited edition collections. Because if you miss out on this and you keep an eye on what Kiko is going to be putting out in the next year or so, in like a random spring collection, they'll have the exact same color story, but with different packaging going on. They do this for their base products as well. They rotate a lot through older limited edition collections. And once every two years, the exact same products seem to be coming back. So if you miss out on a certain Kiko limited edition collection product, you definitely don't need to be sad about it because they usually bring it back. Then number 69, Dear Dahlia. This is Strawberry Crush, which is one of their little eyeshadow palettes. Now, apparently they are now doing bigger things, which um, I was able to spot the brand when I was in Paris. They sell this at Galerie Lafayette. So I was able to actually have a look at the display and they definitely are doing different things now. And it looked a lot more interesting to me than this little guy with like, it's got a little mirror in the middle and then it just opens like this. It's really cute and compact, but this has a cream and then two shimmering shadows. And I feel the cream is a little bit peachy. The shades are a little bit mauve So I felt it wasn't a great match. And the shimmers in here aren't all that great. So I was not super impressed with this. I'm glad I got to try it, but Dear Dahlia as a brand is quite expensive. I believe this little guy was already 30 euros. So, and I remember I got like a 25% off deal and here I can only get it online. So it's a little bit difficult to tell what's the good stuff and what's not. So maybe if I come across the brand in a physical store again and I actually have a look at what they're doing. But Dear Dahlia was one of those brands. I just wanted to give a shot, like try them out and see what they were all about. And I tried a couple of their products, but for the price point, I feel it's a little bit overpriced. And I've definitely tried Asian beauty brands that are more affordable than this that I like better, which is why this goes in the bottom part of the ranking. This big guy, the Naked Cyber from Urban Decay. Granted, I did really enjoy the looks I did with this for sure. This is a stunning palette, but that random orange, I can't get over the random orange and all of the light peachy tones that we get in here. Urban Decay needs to understand that. That doesn't always go. Granted, I had a lot of fun playing with these more like duochrome shades for sure. And this, I feel, was a very smart move on behalf of Urban Decay because I felt that they were trying to like dip their toe into the trend of duochrome and multichrome, but then make it wearable. I think that if you were to go into an office job wearing this palette, nobody is going to look at you like, what are you wearing? Whereas if you have these very flippy indie things, it may be a little bit too much for the average workplace, depending on where, of course, you work. But if you were to work a corporate job or if you're in teaching or in healthcare, you, you can only get away with wearing so much makeup most of the time if you're even allowed to wear it. I mean, I think if you're in healthcare in certain like roles, you will not be able to wear makeup at all, I'm sure. 
Um, so this is definitely something that, you know, you just, ha it, it just taps into that like perfect for everyday kind of territory. But I have just found if I want a multi-chrome or a duochrome, I want it to show up. Then I want people to see the flip. And with this is just a little too subtle for my liking. And I just have better duochromes and multi-chromes that do give me the flip because then Dior House of Dreams. I'm putting some of the more boring things in the bottom part of this ranking for sure. Um, but this is boring, but good. I mean, if you were looking for one and done shadows all in one palette and this like be your like go-to palette for the rest of your life, this is actually a really good one. Um, we get a lot of taupey things. This is the House of Dreams palette, by the way, which was limited edition for Christmas last year. Um, they seem like this year they did an exact like replica of this. And I actually think that they're, is it their cashmere? Is that's what it's called? The quintet very much reminds me of that. I was actually hoping to get that, but then they released this. I was like, oh, I might as well try this. We get a matte dark brown, we get a silver thing to make things sparkle a little bit more, but then these three shades that are just essentially, if you put them on the eyes, all going to look the same way, which a lot of people said was a downside of this. But I think that if you are someone who just likes the same shade and you just use up a shade until you move on to the next one, this is that kind of palette. Like this palette just reminds me of my mom who just like always uses the same shadow until it's like completely wrecked. I think this is that palette for those kind of people. That's what it's aimed at. That's what it's marketed at. And I did like the quality of this. It was very soft, very pretty, very sort of, yeah, I think this is like one of those palettes you can just go back to time and time again, and it will look pretty every time. Then we need to talk about these two things. So a lot of the essence things I tried this year aren't even in the ranking because I already sort of like essentially move them out of my collection if I haven't already. So these two are from the fall collection. So those are still hanging around. This is the don't worry be and don't stop believing in palettes. The quality of these is great. This is the taupey one, really lovely. But we get this really random strong yellow tone gold, which I don't love. Um, and then this is the purpley one, the mauvey one, which is also really pretty. I don't really understand this split, this split pan though. I just don't. And these are so small and dinky that they're great travel palettes, but these just get lost in my collection. And in terms of what they offer color story wise, I feel they're not unique enough and the, the quality is good, but nothing to write home about. Like this didn't wow me in any way, shape or form, which is why it's in this part of the ranking. And very similarly, Catrice, the Desert Romance eyeshadow palette. This is one of their pro slim ones. This is the last one they came out with in 2022. This is the eighth one they've dropped. Um, and this is one of the ones where I'm like, yeah, this is not very unique in terms of everything else that I've got going on in my makeup collection. It's very warm tone. So you knew I wasn't going to love it, but we also get some duplicate shades. Like whether you're wearing this, this or that, it doesn't make much of a difference. This, this, and again, this doesn't make much of a difference. Some of the shimmers all look the same. So this is definitely not one of the good ones. The quality is okay. Um, I didn't mind it from that perspective, but the color story is a bit meh. And then we need to talk about these Clio things. So I tried some more K-Beauty eyeshadow palettes and actually trying these guys, as well as some other palettes that you see will see coming up that I'm now like, oh, I need to try some more K-Beauty eyeshadow because they do really stunning things. Um, this is the... Picnic by the Sunset. And this was the one that I was expecting to like the most because it's got the mauve tones. You get some more shimmers in here as well. One of them is a pressed glitter though, which a lot of these K-Beauty palettes seem to have, which I don't love. And everything else is very matte heavy. But I was like, you know, really stunning mattes in here, really nice, but for what it does, I feel I have some more exciting things for sure. So this is not one where I'm like, mm, I need to keep that around but they also do this. This is walking on the cozy alley and this only has the one shimmer, which is right here. And I thought this is going to be my least favorite of the two, but then I tried them and I actually like this better because the undertone is a bit more taupey leaning. These browns looked stunning. Granted, we get a lot of duplicate shades, which is another one of the reasons why I'm putting these so far down at the bottom, not because these are bad or anything. It's just, this, if you just want a super basic look, foolproof every time. Really rich, creamy shadows. Ooh, I'm 
pressing the brush in there. Um, really rich, creamy mattes. I mean, I feel that these mattes are up to par with some of the stuff in the Patrick Ta, and, and I would go for this over the Patrick Ta any time of day. And finally, number 61 is going to be the Desert Monsoon palette from What's Up Beauty. So this was sent to me in PR, and I just had completely forgotten I owned this. <laughs> So I didn't get to try it until like the summertime because I had, I just hadn't put it in, like I hadn't registered that this had arrived on my doorstep. And this is really, really pretty. It's a really lovely, more like jewel tone kind of palette, but without it being too saturated, you could say. There are a couple of shades here that I think I love, but there's also some shades like this pinky shade that I'm like, mm, what am I gonna do with you? This is one where, again, I've tried it. I like the formula a lot but it's just not one that really registered with me as like owning already before I tried it. Then I tried it and I was like, oh yeah, I have this palette as well. So this is one that kind of got lost in the shuffle. And since I try a lot of eyeshadow, it takes a lot to stand out in my brain. So that's why this one has to be ranked here. Moving on then through to the 60 through 50 range. And this is going to be number 60. This is going to be the H&M quad in Nice Mauves. So this is, again, like I said about the Clio palettes, just nothing special. Is this nice shadow for sure? I think that if you were to buy this, you weren't too upset with it if this is what you're looking for. These are really soft, blendable shadows. This is very, very similar to Charlotte Tilbury's The Vintage Vamp, and this is, the H&M one is, a, is like the cool toned version of this. Um, so this is a, like plummy, nice things. Um, it's very, very pretty. And I feel that this is very similar to the quality you get from Charlotte Tilbury as well. I have now tried a couple of H&M beauty products where I feel it may actually be manufactured in the same factory as Charlotte Tilbury. The formulas feel very similar. And that's why I think this is good. I like it, but again, not necessarily something I need to keep around. And I just wanna be very quick about this section of the ranking because it's a lot of these little ColourPop things. I think that in terms of good quality, ColourPop quality, it's now in these little quads that they do. Um, I've got a couple of the Zodiac ones. I'm not gonna take them all out of the box, but I also have a couple of their like standard ones. So I have this matte one, which is the Dare to Bear, which is really lovely. Um, if you're looking for good mattes, they're nice. And then I have the Sorbet, which is really pretty too. The um, Zodiac ones I think are my favorite, but the Head Copper Corn in Charge is like cool tones and it's pretty, but not necessarily some, something I need. This one came in a set and I feel like I didn't really need this either. It's green, so they're very warm toned. Not my favorite. My favorite two, I think, are the Tender Loving Cancer and the Virgo palette. So I'll show you the Virgo one because it's quite similar to Sorbet, but I think I like this better. It's a bit more cool toned and we get some more interesting shimmers in here, which is what these um, Zodiac ones have. They all have a duochrome in, uh, which makes them a bit more special. So I think out of all of these, I would just keep these two around and I declutter these four if this were, like if it were up to me to declutter my collection now. Uh, these color stories just aren't that unique and I feel that these two are perhaps the best ones I've tried together with the cream soda. And that's why I got so many of them. I love my cream soda so much that I ended up purchasing a couple more of those. I haven't bought any more of them since because the color stories in these four pans are a little basic for my liking. Next up, oh yes. Pat McGrath, the Vine Rose one. So I, I bought this in 2021, I think, was it during the Black Friday sale or maybe a little earlier when she had another sale on? I think I got like 25% off, so I thought it was a pretty good deal. And the Divine Rose one was one that was on my wish list because it seemed to be one of her lighter aimed at fair skin options, but it's just far too warm toned. I've said many times in the past that there are definitely two out of the four special shades in this palette that I just don't love. So um, yeah, this one was a bit of a miss buy for me personally. I didn't love this. <clears throat> I didn't love this and uh, I actually now have one of her newer palettes, which I think is a great replacement for this. Um, and that's why I think I'm just gonna stick with that newer palette and this is probably going to end up on a declutter pile. I'm not sure yet what to do with these, whether uh, because I think there is another Pat McGrath palette I might wanna actually get rid of, one of the motherships. And I'm still thinking like, should I try and see if I can pull them apart? 
Um, I've seen Kat from Ka uh, Kitchenich do this and she's been able to rearrange them and she just kept all of the special shades in one palette. But these come on a mesh instead of like in a traditional pan. So I'm not sure whether I wanna do that or maybe just try and sell them. I don't know. But yeah, Divine Rose one wasn't a success for me. And then we have these two left. So we have the Bubble Gum from BH Cosmetics. This is from their Sweet Shop line. This is one that I got later. I bought the green one first, loved it a lot, and also decided to buy the blue one. It's got some really interesting shimmers, especially the steel shade. This really dark, brighter navy blue is really stunning too. I really like this, but now that I have this, I also own the Glam Shop uh, blue palette from them. It's called Nibiski, I believe. And I'm sort of like still up on the fence, like do I need to keep both? Or can I get away with just having one straight up blue palette? Because I have other blues er elsewhere. So this is one where I'm like, hmm, yeah, I really like the quality. I love it, but because of the monochromatic color story, it's also quite limiting in what it can do. So maybe I'll keep it around because it's a really good BH palette, but not so sure how long this is going to last in my makeup collection, which is why I decided to rank it in the bottom half of the ranking. <clears throat> And then also here, the Naked Urban Decay Mini 3. Naked 3 Mini, that's what this thing is called. So I, I struggled finding this because this, this is when I started noticing that Urban Decay was no longer releasing all of their new stuff here. I, I had to get this from England in order to get it like at all because it never launched here. Um, so that's part of the gripe I have with this, but... I like this. I really do. In terms of like a great like great travel palette, this was this is a really great option, I think. But I think they were just a little late to the game. I think if this had been released back when Naked 3 was like the palette to own, I think it would have worked a lot better. I but I kind of bought it to complete the set because I have the Naked 1 mini, Naked 2 mini, and now I have the Naked 3 mini. I like this. I like these shades for sure. Um, but I've actually made a <laughs> cool tone palette out of my Naked 2 and Naked 3, keeping all of the shades I like best. And because I already have the larger Naked, Naked 3, I feel I don't really need this. But yeah, it's a handy thing to have. And that's the only reason why I have it. But that's, it, like, it pales in comparison to some of the other things I still have coming up. Going from 50 to 40 now. So this is the last part of the bottom half. I have my Charlotte Tilbury Walk of No Shame. So this was a gift with purchase when I did my Black Friday purchase last year. Um, and this was lovely. It looked a lot better on me than I had expected for this being so warm toned. It's perhaps because it's a little bit more rose gold leaning, especially that like sparkly shade. But I already mentioned it when I talked about the H&M palette. This is just not my go-to brand for eyeshadow. Charlotte Tilbury just isn't. You don't get a lot of product. These are quite expensive. I'm glad that I got to try this like as a freebie because now I've tried that color story, but this is not something I would have gone and bought on my own. So that's why it had to go into the bottom part of this ranking. And then another K-Beauty palette. This is the Rêve de Paris à Moonshot, which is from the brand Moonshot. And this looked like a really nice, like cool toned and then a warm tone color story, great for travel kind of thing. Um, so I thought, but this is just a little bit warm leaning for my liking. The two shimmers you get in here are stunning. It's a really nice pocket size palette. I really like it for that. And this is the other palette I tried this year that made me go, oh, I need to try some more K-Beauty because the quality is stunning. I just need to find some good color stories that work for me that are a little bit more cool toned and that have a few more shimmer options. I've got a couple of singles from K-Beauty brands that I absolutely love and adore. In fact, it's what's on my eyes today as well. I'm wearing a Holika Holika eyeshadow today and this is absolutely stunning. And this is just one that I love but it just, the color story is just a little bit lacking for what I personally would like to get day-to-day -day wear out of, which is why this is not my favorite pick. BH Cosmetics, Passion in Paris. This is one of the final travel palettes I think they came out with before they disappeared from the market for a bit uh, in 2022. And I have set this in my review as well. If it didn't have the berries, I would have liked this a lot better. So, Without the berries, this works a lot better. However, I did like this better than the blueberry muffin that a lot of people were raving about a year before. 
Um, this one is nice. It's good quality, and now that I'm looking at it again, I'm like, mm, do I want to keep this around? Because it has some stunning cool tones. It's got some good purples. This has a really good crease shade for me as well. Um, but overall, the reason why I ended up ranking it in this part of the ranking is just because I'm like, but I have other purples that I would reach for. I would, if I think purple palette, I think Violette Etendue by Viseart. I don't think Passion in Paris by BH. So maybe I should just get rid of this one. And then we have the Tarte Le Juicy palette. This is one that I did like a little less than I had expected, which is why I'm ranking it here. I like the pinky tones and I like these neutral tones, but these warm tones were just way off on my skin tone, which is why I didn't love it as much as I had expected. I just thought that it was going to work for me like the In Bloom wood or the Toasted wood, where we do get like different undertones in the different lines you could say but you can mix and match them quite easily and it works quite well however the reason why i still like this and i like hang having it about is because this bridges the gap between the in bloom and the toasted for me so it's not as warm as toasted but it's got warmth but it's not as neutral and boring as the in bloom so if i want to get more versatility out of those palettes I feel this nicely rounds it out. So it's definitely part of my Tarte family, so that's why I do like it, and that's why it's ranked a lot higher than some of the other more warm-toned options that I have tried this year. Next up are these two palettes from Blend Bunny. Like, I can just peer behind these. That's how big they are. That's one of the reasons why they're in the bottom half of the ranking. They're big. I don't love big palettes, but everybody's raving about them, saying how lovely these were. So I was like, okay, I'll try them out. Um, so I tried these at the start of the year, I think, and like these were pretty. Um, the Dollhouse is my least favorite one of the two, mainly because it's too dark. Like this row of really dark mattes, everybody's raving about how that's like something unique that Blend Bunny has to offer. Well, if you're this pale, all of these shades are going to look identical on your skin tone if you blend them out with a brush. So not something I needed. What I would have liked is something to bridge the gap between these two. So if this could have moved up and then have a line here that bridges the gap between these two shades, because these are just a touch too light for me and these are a touch too deep for me for the most part. I do like the shimmers in here. Another thing I wanted this palette to have, instead of a blue matte, a blue shimmer, a taupey shimmer then it would have been even better. My favorite of the two was the Surge. This one I think is really fun and it really made me like just excited to play with makeup again. The dark line in here isn't overly dark, so it's not too black heavy, which I liked. We get neons. We only get one row of shimmers though, which is why I'm ranking it here. I mean, if I get this many shades, I mean, there's 30 of them and you're only giving me six shimmers. Why? What's up with that? I don't love that. I don't love mattes, this many mattes in a palette, which is why it's ranked here. But in terms of a more unique rainbow color story, yes, yes, I like this a lot when I played around with it, but I felt because I had so few shimmers to play with, I just didn't get the options I wanted. And there's actually 11 palettes in this ranking, part of the ranking, because apparently I miscalculated and there are 81 palettes. I really can't count anymore. Oh, well. Um, we have uh, the Catrice Modern, no, Elegant Cocky Look. Isn't that what it's called? Yes. The five in a box Elegant Cocky Look, which for a cocky palette, which is one green, it's not cocky enough. We get a peach. Why? And then this is just the gold. So I just felt that when you when this launched or when it was announced, it looked very sort of mini retro-esque. And then I got it and then it just wasn't that. And it's just a bit of a letdown for that reason. Can you do really pretty looks with this? Yes, the five in a box palettes are still some of my favorites from Catrice. They are really nice, but Catrice came out with something much better that made me realize, yes, Catrice, you can do it if you set your minds to it. This just wasn't it. And next up, we have another sort of like grouping because these are all of my Game Beauty palettes. I thought I had tried these last year, but this is one of the things I was trying to do in 2022. I was catching up on a lot of the things I had bought in the second half of 2021 that I just hadn't get a, gotten around to. And it took me well until like the springtime to try these. So I think that's why. Um, there are some other palettes in here. I was like, oh, really? Was it this year that I tried it? 
Oh, I hadn't realized it. Oh well. Um, these three were really lovely. The Adventure palette though has a press glitter, which is just not my favorite. And what these palettes suffer from in my brain, uh, at least these first two that I'll show you, is that there's always like one or two shades and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? Like these two shades on the end, I'm like, it's, it's very green blue heavy and then you get these random shades. So it feels a little less fleshed out. And I felt similarly about the uh, the fantasy palette, which is again, very sort of blue purple heavy. And then you get these random pastels. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Um, my favorite of the three is the victory palette. This is the most well-rounded of the three. Um, they have come out with two new palettes since me trying this, um, or me buying these, you could say, and I do want to sort of complete the collection, but I also feel like this didn't wow me to the point where I'm like, I need to get them all. It's just that the palette is so, like the packaging is so pretty that you just want to have them all. But this is warm tones with bluey teals, and I do really like that combination, you could say. This was far more successful for me than the other two were, uh, which was unexpected because I thought this is warm tones. I'm not going to love it, but the combination with the teals and also this white has a blue shift to it. So for me, this came together a lot more than the other two. Number 41 then, before we get into another part of this ranking, is the Nomad Land of Fire and Ice. Nomad Cosmetics does some really lovely shades. I have to, like, their color stories are great. And I have found with Nomad Cosmetics, if it's a color story I like, I like them. But their formula is a little finicky for me. It's quite thin. And even though I like a thinner, more blendable, buildable formula, I feel with this, especially in their shimmers, it can just look a little bit weird. It can almost look sugary with some of the shades I've tried from them. This palette definitely doesn't have it. It's again, like it's got the warm tones in the middle and then you get these grayish blues and then you get these grayish greens with some purpley shades. It's a very unique color story that I thought pulled some, I was able to pull some very stunning looks out of it. I love the packaging. We get the, like, the ice on the outside and then we get the inside of a volcano on the inside. We get a little elf guy here. Really lovely. Um, but these, I just, I think that the Nomad formula is just not my favorite, even though I do like a lot of the color stories they do, which is why I don't go out and buy and collect these like, some other people do where they have like every palette the brand has ever released. Um, but the color stories I have that I now know work for me, I like. So that's why this is sort of like in the middle part of this ranking. Next, we're going from numbers 40 to 30. So number 40, um, and then a couple of other numbers coming up. I've got a lot of like Catrice <laughs> Disney palettes and an Essence one. Um, I just decided to pop these somewhere in the middle, like I've already mentioned with the other Essence palettes I showed you that were from limited edition collections. It's not my favorite formula. These were good and I've kept the color stories that I like. These were the better ones that they were offering from these lines for sure. So from the Villains collection, the Ursula palette was pretty, but I felt it, you know, it's gonna go into a makeup memories box. It's, if this collection interested you, the palettes weren't the best part if that makes sense. And then the Corella is the gray ones with that pop of red. You knew I was gonna love it. I like the looks that came out of this and also the Maleficent one, which is very light though. I would have liked there to just to be more depth in these. Like the color stories just aren't as exciting. I mean, it's a villains collection. We, wanted, we also wanna do the dark evil side of the villain, you know, not just these pastel things. Oh well, that's just me. And then from the classics collection that they did, so this is um, the Dumbo and the Bambi palette I already showed you are from the same collection as the Lady palette. And this was stunning. This was a really good quality palette. But I've, I've mentioned warm tones a few times. I'm not gonna wear this a whole lot, even though it's stunning. This is really, really, really good quality. This shimmer is a red with an orange flip. It's really, really pretty, really good quality shadow but I just know that this color story is not gonna go into daily makeup rotation for sure. 
Then, this is a palette that I actually also, again, tried the other palette from this line of as well. This is Zoeva's Together We Grow palette, and they also have Together We Shine, I believe. That one I already gave away to someone because it was just not my color story. It was Warm Tone Mauves. I didn't love it. It also didn't have that many shimmers, but the Together We Grow... Everybody is sleeping on this palette, let me tell you, because this, if you're looking for a very good everyday neutral palette, this is the one. Because of the gold packaging, it looks a lot more warm toned than you might expect. These are like cooler toned taupey green shades. Love them. Then we have warmth. Like we've got some reddish tones here, then we've got some orangey tones, then some really straight up neutrally browns, and then some lighter shades to round out some looks and blend things out. And everything is a pairing, like it's a matte with a shimmer every single time. Like these are all of the shimmers, those are the mattes. You can do a look with this row, you can look do a look with that row, you can mix and match. Like it's such a foolproof palette. I think Zoeva really did something stunning here, but because it's a bit boring, nobody's talking about it. And it's also one that I'm not reaching for a whole lot, but I love the Zoeva quality. I really enjoy their, like I still have all the older palettes I still have because I like them so much. This is definitely one that had to go in this part of the ranking because I do like it. It's therefore in the top part, but it's at the bottom half of the top part of the ranking because it's just not my ultimate, ultimate favorite. Another pairing, these two guys from Unique Beauty. So Unique Beauty is an indie brand that I tried this year. Um, and it was one that I heard Nikki Raven talking about. This is the Pamper Me and the Bubble Time. And the shimmer formula of this brand is out of this world amazing, but the mattes are a bit, mm. So I get three full on shimmers in here, two mattes, and then the blue is a sequin shade. But the, the shimmers in here are lovely. My favorite was the bubble time because you get those bluey tealy shades. So I think of the two, I would probably keep this one around, declutter the other one. So uh, mainly because, um, yeah, the shimmers in here are just also a bit more appealing to me. The mattes need work and that's why it's just not the full package and everything else we still have going up, uh, coming up is going to be far better in terms of then another boring but good palette, the, Cl the Glossier Monochromatic Palette in Jute. This was in my December review for you, and this is lovely. I really enjoy playing with this. It's taupes, you know, I love that. But it, it needs a dark shade. It needs a quad where we get a, a darker shade to deepen things up. That's the only thing I'm missing that I can use as liner, do all that with. Then it would have been perfect. But this was lovely, lovely quality. I liked it. <clears throat> And I feel quite similarly about the M Cosmetics, uh, what's this called again? Divine Skies eyeshadow palette in Rodin. This is, it's nice, it's nice, but again, it's quite boring. You can only do so many looks with it. Um, I just want a little bit more vers versatility out of my palettes. Here we get like three mattes, one satin and two shimmers. I just feel that every single time I use this, I get the same sort of vibe, so. I want something that's a little bit more unique. Number 31 then, the Haunted Euro palette from Nomad Cosmetics. I like this a lot better than the Land of Fire and Ice. Um, same thing still goes for Nomad, what I just told you about the brand. This is lovely. This color story is right up my street. I mean, we get like the fall vibes here and then the spooky vibes here. So it's a perfect fall palette. You just get everything you need. So, and the packaging is... Stunning. I believe they discontinued this though. Mm. Moving on then to numbers 30 to 20. And in the number 30 spot, another Pat McGrath palette. This is the Utopian Dream. Now this I liked a lot better, mainly because the color story for once worked for me a lot better than what, um, uh, what Pat McGrath normally does. So this is an example of a palette that I'm going to keep over something else that I already own from the brand. Um, this has some lovely things. It's got some really pretty lavender shimmers. The box is, of course, also where it's at. So this worked a lot better for me. I have found that if Pat McGrath does a color story that works for me, it's lovely and I really enjoy the brand. But if she does, it's just all very pinky and warm and it's just not always my vibe and I just need to accept that. But this, was, this one was very successful. Um, it's my version of what I wanted the Divine Rose 2 to be. Number 29, 
the Odin's Eye Hella collab with Angelica Nukvist. This is a stunning palette. I really enjoy it, but I don't like the pinks. If it didn't have the pinks, I like what she's going for. She's going for what I actually have going on today, pink with green. That was the idea behind this palette. I just feel that Hela as a goddess is death and life. And I feel we get a lot of life, but we don't get a lot of death because the bottom row is all of a sudden very dark and stark compared to the vibrancy of the shades we get here. So that's the only thing I don't love about this palette. So it wasn't quite perfect for me. It's also one that I didn't buy straight away precisely for that reason. Cause I was like, I'm not sure I'm gonna love the pinks. <laughs> so I knew I would love this row. I knew I'd love this row. I knew I'd like some of these like murky yellowy shades as well but the pinks were just throwing me off and I just felt that if I were to ever go back to this palette, the shades I'm going to use is everything but the pinks. Then some more Glaminatrix. This is the Nocturnal palette. This worked for me a lot better than the Nearly Natural. The only reason why I'm putting it in this part of the ranking and not a little bit higher is because I feel some of the shimmers and the mattes don't really go together. The shimmer formula in this was far smoother. I had no issues working with this and I did film a short where I do a look with this sort of side of the palette as well, in case you would like to uh, like to have a look. But I just felt that, you know, this has a very plummy undertone and then this teal is a bit too bright. So also this periwinkle shade doesn't really go with the peach. This is far too murky compared to the brightness of this green. So I felt that like put, putting things together was not always successful. So this is just not a great standalone palette. It's really pretty. It has some lovely shades, but I wish the, the mattes and the shimmers were better matches. So you can actually make a look out of it. And then we have the Melt Blueprints uh, palette, not the stack. I used to own a stack. This is the palette that was gifted to me. I tried it for you in December. I did some looks with it. I really enjoy this, but the browns are a little bit too warm toned for my liking personally. I love the combination of those warm tones with the blues though. So I definitely, if I were to ever go back to this palette, do a look where I pull in some of the browns, some of the blues, and that's what this palette is perfect for. It's great for the summertime. It's a little limiting though, in terms of what it can do color story wise, which is why I'm ranking it here. And then the Natasha Denona My Dream palette, which again, I reviewed for you in December and I said it then, and I'm gonna say it again. This is if you take the glam and the retro and you turn up the saturation. That's just what this is. Was I able to pull some stunning looks out of it? For sure. It's got a multi-chrome, so you get some fun things to play around with as well. Um, I pulled some really pretty looks out of it. Um, it's just not one that, because I already own the retro and the glam, I feel I necessarily need it in my personal collection. I'm glad I got to try it for you all. I think if you've never bought from Natasha Denona and you're looking for a good neutral palette that isn't too cool toned, not too warm toned, then this is right smack in the middle because it gives you a bit of both. Um, so therefore for me, this is a true neutral, neutral palette you could say. Um, so yeah, it had some stunning things and I liked it, but I wasn't blown away with this like I was with the glam, as you will see, like if you know me a little bit, then that, that was like, oh, this wasn't. Then we have another grouping and it's Unearthly Cosmetics. This is their Strawberry Milkshake and Lore palettes. Now I tried them a year before that in 2021. I tried their Fairy Frolic and their Serendipity palette, which is now called the Poison Apple, which is discontinued, I believe. Um, but yeah, I still, be based on what I tried then, wanted to try some more. And I heard so many people raving about the lore that I just wanted to try it. These pans are massive. Um, I would have liked it if she'd have stuck to the round pans. Just saying. This is a bit too big for me, but this is a really interesting color story. It's very unique, very different. Like with the uh, Nocturnal palette, I feel it doesn't always go together very well. Um, because like, for instance, these two pinky shades are a little too close together for me. Like they have a different flip, but they essentially have the same base pigment to them. So I would have liked one of them to be a truer peach and one of them to be a truer pink. I think I would have liked that better. And this green is also a bit random in here. You can make it work. It works really well. I felt that the yellow and the orange were actually really pretty as transition shades. That was unexpected. So the Lore is definitely one of the more unique palettes in my collection, a formula I enjoy. 
but I tried other things that I liked. So this is a, almost like a little too unique for me. Like I don't love things that are too, too boring, but I also don't love it if it's too out there and I really have to think about how to put them. And then the strawberry milkshake is um, pinks with greens. Um, if I were to go pinks and greens, I would go for this palette, not the Hella palette. So yeah, it's lovely. It's got a really nice stunning formula. Uh, the red in the middle is really, really pretty. Um, not something I would go for all the time though. So that's why it's ranked here. And just because it had to go somewhere, Viseart's Paris, Paris, Paris Etoile. Paris Etoile doesn't sound that great, right? The only reason why it's here, again, versatility, it's very dark, um, but it's got some real, like this taupey shimmer is life. It's so, so stunning. So, so stunning. We get some really nice dark rays in here. We get a teal that doesn't swatch the best, but it looks really nice on the eyes. But yeah, because this is a more limiting color story, I felt it had to go in this part of the ranking. And I feel very similarly about this. This is the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz. This again, pretty limiting. It's very light. It doesn't have any deepening up shades. I like the formula in this, but it's all very sort of or matte or shimmer. There's nothing in between. We don't get different formulas to play around with. And by now I just know that I like a bit of texture in my shadow. So lovely, again, some really lovely like taupey shades here as well. Really love the color story from that perspective. Really pretty makeup but I like the other palette that I have by them just a little bit better. And then last but not least here, I, I had to put it somewhere. I thought I had tried this last year, but apparently I didn't try it until the start of this year, which is in my brain, this is still in 2021, which is why I completely forget about this. But apparently it was a 2022 palette for me. So I do apologize, but the retro is one of my favorite Natasha Denona palettes. It doesn't trump the glam for me though. Like the glam is still the ultimate one. This was lovely. I really liked it. We do get some warmth over this, over in this corner, like we got with the glam. Um, and I, I, I thought there were some really pretty shades in here. It's not as plum as I'd like it to be. I would probably use some of the plummy shades from the My Dream to pull into this one for sure. Um, we get a nice like taupey mo moment in here too. So I liked it for that. Um, but in terms of like everything that I, had to put in this ranking. It's like, yeah, I, I understand why I didn't put this in my top 10 because I like it in terms of like Natasha Denona, but in terms of color story, it's just a little bit boring. We do get some texture to play with, which is why it's number 21. So just out of the top 20, but you know, I had to be tough here. So yeah, I, as much as I like this, I think I have rosy palettes that I like just a touch better. Time for the top 20, number 20, She's in Parties by Melt. I told you I would have rosy mauve, mauve tone palettes in here that I liked even better. I'm not sure when I ranked my rosy mauve tone palettes last year, whether this made it. I think it was top 10, but I'm not sure whether it trumped the retro at the time for me. Um, but it was definitely like top three, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, now that I'm seeing the, all of these palettes together, together again, I was like, yeah, this I like a little bit better than a retro. It's got a bit more depth. It's more my tones, especially like these three shades I really, really like. And then that deeper shade as well. I don't think there's enough of a difference between these two though. So that's why I didn't rank it any higher because of that. But I love the Melt formula. Uh, Melt and Natasha Denona are two of my favorite eyeshadow brands for sure. So yeah, you knew these were gonna get ranked higher, but again, I've tried other things that I like better this year. Plain Jane Remastered by Adept. So this is by Adept Cosmetics. This is an all shimmer palette. And this is the, my least favorite of the two that I tried. I really did like the formula of this. It's that very creamy formula though. So that's something you need to be aware of because not everybody likes it. But this is filled with multi-chromes and duochromes and shifty things and you definitely need something else to pick, like to really round out the look I feel. Um, when I tried this out, I tried to create looks with just the palette and it worked, but not my favorite. I would definitely have to use some of my boring like Clio or Glossier or whatever palettes to use together with this. And I definitely think it works like that. One I need to be very careful with because it's a little bit shattered. I tried the Sigil inspired Perky Lavender Chinchilla palette for you. This is by Temi Tanuka, and I still have a little plastic on it because it's so fragile. Um, but this is like grays and a purple. So it's really, really pretty, 
really soft, pretty looks, but because it's only six shades, it can be very limiting. And these shades all have the same level of depth, so there isn't that much versatility. And then we have the other Aether Beauty that I, a palette that I tried. This is the Moonlight Crystal. And this I like better because we just get a little bit more depth in here. Like it goes from very light to very dark. Whereas the other one just goes mid-tone. And this is a bit more special because of that. We also get some more interesting shades. Like this looks like a gray, but then when you apply it, it has a bit of a flip, but it's very subtle. This was very pretty. And I like how it pairs with the rose quartz as well. So I feel they make for a good tandem. Um, but yeah, this, this was lovely. It's the more colorful one of the two. I thought I was going to love the rose quartz more than this one when I tried it, but this one was very successful for me. Some more Natasha Denona, the mini Zendo. I did really like this. Um, I liked it a lot more than I had expected. And I think that's why I ranked it a little bit higher than the retro here. Um, we do get a lot of peachy things, but I really like that greeny tone in the middle. Um, and I really enjoyed the look that came out of it. This is like warm tones done right for me. I don't need the entire Zendo palette, but this gives me that sort of vibe and I like it. Something else that was a little bit more warm tone that I did like is the Anastasia uh, Beverly Hills Nouveau palette. So this was, of course, everywhere over the summer. I don't hear anybody talking about it anymore, though. I, wh what happened? Like, before, people would talk about things for so much longer, and now I'm like, where did everybody go talk about the Nouveau? I like this a lot better than I had expected, again. It's warm, it's got peachy tones here, and then you get these warmer tones here. But this is a little bit more cool toned. This is a little bit more cool toned. This is a bit more cool toned. This is cool toned as well. So we get, it's a very good neutral palette. And I really like some of the shimmers we got in here, especially wings and also this greeny shade here called Hope. Peacock is really pretty. The only shade I really didn't need is that orange tone, everything else I like. So that's why this is number 13. Number 12, the new mod from Sigma. I actually think I like this better than the retro. And the reason why I'm saying that is because this has, it's, it has a little bit more depth, but it's got more of like a, is it that warm tone though? I felt it had more depth than a lot of other rosy tone palettes that I tried. And maybe I just like some deeper things, but we get some like cooler tone things over here. We do get some like true rosy warm leaning shades, but then we get some more cooler tones here as well. I really enjoyed working with this palette. And in terms of like a good Sigma palette, I now think that if you want to try the band, try, try, the, try this one. I really enjoyed the new mod, and this is one that I'm now like, hmm, I need to put this again into like a, I need to go back to this palette kind of video, because this was good. I just really remember liking it, um, and maybe my memory serves me wrong, who knows. Number 11 then, the Rose Quartz from Huda Beauty. So this is another palette where I was like, was that this year? I thought it was last year, but that's when it came out and when I bought it but I didn't get to try it until the very start of 2022. So this is another reminder that, you know, it's just a good thing that I've caught back on buying palettes this year. Like I didn't buy as many things because most of the things I'm showing you here were things I bought in 2021, but I didn't get around to trying them until like halfway 2022. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to like catch up with things and, I now no longer will have to leave reviews for such a long time that a palette fits into a certain year in my brain and then I hadn't tried it until the next year. This is very successful for me. It's very cool toned, rosy toned, pinky tones. I really enjoy this. I've said in the past how this combined with the retro together are my replacement for one of my all time favorite palettes, which is the Naked 3 from Urban Decay. Um, and this is definitely part of that as well. I, I really need to combine and pull from both palettes to get all of the shades I love for my Naked 3, which is why I'm ranking the retro a little bit lower than this one, because I feel that this is just more my vibe. We get those taupey things, we get the pinky things. Um, we don't get as much warmth, like it's only over here. Of course, this being Huda Beauty, we do get a weird putty shade, but I really enjoyed this one. This is another one that I just need to go back to with.
Time for the top 10. Yay, we're here, almost there. It's the home stretch. Number 10, Ninhydrin from Adept. This one I like better than the Plain Jane, mainly because it has those mattes in there. And this is just my, more my color story. You get those purpley blues and it would get some greens. There are some warm tones here, but they're not overly warm tones. Again, everything that's shimmery in here is that nice sort of flippy kind of shade. I really enjoyed it. This is a very creamy formula, very rich and definitely something different. And this is like, like that sweet spot where I'm like, yes, it's pushing me out of my comfort zone, but it's giving me versatility. And I did really enjoy this palette, which is why it's number 10. Number nine, Pat McGrath, Venus in Fleurs, Look Squad Voyeuristic Vixen. That's the full name of this thing. This is a stunning little quad. I really enjoyed it. I know I didn't take the other ones out because they're still in the box, but this one is a bit easier to show you. I really loved it. It's, it's the reason why I put it in my top 10. This is just making me realize that in terms of Pat McGrath's color stories, I like them even though this is quite warm toned. I like it, but this is a little bit more curated. We only get one matte, three shimmers. I mean, I love a good shimmer. This is really, really stunning and sparkly here. But this, rather than a gold that she seems to insist in putting all of her palettes, this is like a taupey bronze and I love it for it. So this palette was very successful for me. It has some really unique shades and I'm really glad I own it, which is why it's number nine. Number eight, Fantasy Cosmetica, the Druid palette. This eyeshadow palette was so, so stunning. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it has five shimmers, four mattes. It's very reminiscent of like an ABH subculture kind of thing. This is one of my favorite things I've tried all year for a good reason. I really like the looks that came out of this as well. I felt very similarly about the Fall Magic from Unearthly. This is stunning. It, again, it has some more warmth than I normally go for, but the looks I created with this were so, so amazing, and that's why it has to go. And that's why this had to go into the number seven spot. Number six then, Raven's Castle Palette by Makeup by Lisa. This is from a UK brand from England, which is, this is like, I put this, in a palette battle video. In case you don't know, I do these videos once a month where I take four palettes and I sort of give them points, not based on, well, it's still based on my preference, but more like metrics based. And I give each palette a point depending on whether I feel they win that round or not. A bit like a boxing match. And this very much like climbed to the top of like my gray black sort of cool tone palettes. And I had not expected that. This has some sparkly shades here. We get a black, we get some taupiness, we get some purpliness. The only thing I wish this palette would have had instead of this matte white is to have like a purple matte. Then it would have been perfect, but I really like the formula of this. This was lovely and nobody talks about it. So that's why I wanted to put it here. And then if you saw my favorites video, then you know I love these little Kaleidos quads. These are the ones from the St Smoky Nostalgia collection. So this is the Cold Brew and this is the Black Jasmine palettes. I like both of these to pieces. Really stunning quality, really great shimmer. But like you'll see me talk about when I show you the other quads I have from ColourPop that I got this year, I wish the shimmers would have been reversed. So I would have liked not this shimmer, because this is just not as intense. I just would have liked to have that silver in there. But yeah, I have both quads, so I can very easily do that look if I were so inclined. Then the Serenity palette from Cosmic Brushes is number three. I think in terms of like blue, green, purple palette, like yes, the Aether Beauty one is nice, but this one definitely takes the cake. I like this a lot more than I had expected. Granted, it has few more mattes than I would have wished. Um, I would have liked there to be more shimmers in here than I would have liked it even better, but it's definitely a good number three this year. Uh, came out of nowhere. I had never heard of the brand before, but it's definitely a very good one. Did I say that was number three? It's number four. This is number three. These are the Kaleido squads from the Knights of Creation collection. So these are the purpley ones. We have the Glowing Iris and the Flowing Haze. And here again, I feel this shimmer is quite dark. So I would have loved this shimmer to be in here. But again, I've got quote both quads so I can make that happen. Really great pigmentation, great shimmer formula. These are stunning little palettes and I would highly recommend you get these if you were interested.
But where would we be without the Viseart Kashmiri? This is one that I didn't forget about. I bought, or I tried this year. This is something I bought at the very, very tail end of 2021. And then I was like, yeah. This is such a great one. Yes, it's neutral, but it's not boring. And that's what I love. So we get enough depth here to really deepen things up. We get a bit of warmth. We get some rosy to rosiness. We get some coolness. We get some really stunning neutrals in here as well. And no matter which way you use this palette, you can use it as quads. You can use it as like a little sextet over here. You can use it as duos. And every single time you will have a flawless, foolproof look one of the best palettes that has ever come around for sure, and one of my favorite neutral palettes I have ever tried. And finally, my number one palette, again, because it just came out of nowhere, it was completely unexpected, and I hadn't seen this one coming. Plus, it's super affordable. <laughs> it's the Falling Colors by Catrice. This, oh boy, this is so good. It's, now that I'm looking at it again, hold on. Hold on. Isn't this like if you were to take the Viseart palette and like added a couple of shades? It's got a very similar vibe. Granted, this has the gold background, so it kind of throws you off. Looks a lot more warm toned than it actually is. Uh, I'm gonna have to flip it backwards to show you. Um, but if we cover up these two shades, really stunning, like just really interesting color story excellent quality like this is the kind of quality where you go like is that catrice nah never in that it is catrice this isn't just good quality eyeshadow at the drugstore i've said this many times before this is good quality eyeshadow period if you hadn't seen this brand at the front if this came in like huda beauty packaging you would have thought this is a 65 euro natasha denona huda beauty kind of product it, it was 15 euros at the drugstore. I love this so much that I put it in a giveaway to give it away to one of you guys for good reason. This is so, so stunning. It's one of the best palettes Catrice has ever got done. And I'm going to cover this because this is, this is really lovely. I really love this one. So those were all of the eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to rank for you in 2022. I think it just shows you that it's a really good plan, like a good idea of me that I'm now trying fewer eyeshadow palettes for you. I've definitely sort of toned it down a bit and instead of doing 10 at a time, I'm reviewing five at a time, making, making, meaning I also buy fewer palettes and I hope that that's just going to help me to just be able to keep track of things a bit better because as you could tell, like there were some palettes here where I was like, was that this year? Nah, never in, never in a million years, but it was. So I hope I'll be able to sort of keep track of things just a tad bit better. Um, but yeah, I have lots of other eyeshadow palette content planned out for you. I do regular eyeshadow palette reviews at least once a month. I go back to older palettes as well. I tend to compare quite a lot of the palettes I have, which is why it's helpful that I do have a larger eyeshadow palette collection, you could say. So I do these palette battles. I look for dupes. So I have a lot of eyeshadow palette that I love doing for you. Eyeshadow palette related content that I love doing for you, I should say. Um, so I hope you would like to stay tuned for all of that goodness and then I hope to see you in my next video. I hope you would like to, I hope you have a great day. Take care everybody and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.